Oh my goodness. Before we get into today's video, I did wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week so far. I hope everybody is feeling much better than the week before. I hope everybody is spending time with your family. I hope that work is going good for you guys if you guys are working right now. And yeah, I hope everybody is healthy, happy, and drinking their water. Are you drinking your water? So in today's video, I don't know whether to to smile, laugh, doing my head. You know, I don't I don't know what. But if you guys don't know, do y'all remember? Well, I know most of y'all do. For those of other of y'all that maybe has not seen the news lately, do you guys remember Sherry Papini? Hmm? The young mother that was jogging in 2016 and just went missing out of nowhere. She had talked to her husband that day. She dropped her two babies off at daycare. She was communicating with her husband throughout the day. She went out for a run. She was preparing for a uh, 5K, I believe it was, that was coming up. And then later on that day, when her husband got off of work, now her husband and her were high school sweethearts, honey, man. They had known each other since high school. They had been together. They had the picture perfect looking life, okay? You got the young couple. You know, the husband's got a good job, the two beautiful children, the supportive family, you know, just, you know, the things that you see on television, right? Right? That type of situation. But then you have the young mother that goes jogging and poof, disappears out of thin air. Before we get into today's video, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you can get pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your front door. You can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. Today, I will be making nacho crunch burgers with siesta potatoes. So let's get started. In our home, everybody's busy with work and school. But one thing is for sure, we all look forward to when HelloFresh shows up on the doorstep for the week. You can stay on track with simple recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients that will help limit meal prep time and cut back on the trips to the grocery store. With HelloFresh fit and wholesome recipes, you can indulge in delicious meals without any worries. And if you did not know, with HelloFresh, produce gets from the farm to your doorstep in under a week for peak freshness. And my personal favorite, HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including 20 minute meals that is easy cleanup and low prep options. If you want to try HelloFresh, all you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall16 for up to 16 free meals and three free surprise gifts. Yes, just go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall16 and you will get up to 16 free meals and three free surprise gifts today. Thanks again, HelloFresh. Well, when husband gets home, he goes, you know, he, he goes to looking for, can't find her. The kids aren't home. And so he calls up at the daycare and the daycare says, well, Sherry didn't come and pick up the kids. They're still here. You know, we need somebody to come and get these babies. We ready to go home. We off the clock type of thing, right? I mean, I'm adding my own little spin on it. So he goes driving out to where he knows she went jogging and over by these like mailbox area, he sees over in the bush her cell phone and her headset on the side of the road. And right then and there, he knew something was wrong, honey, because he knew his wife was not going to just, you know, not pick up her kids from daycare for one, but for two, she wasn't going to leave her cell phone on the side of the road. So immediately he knew that there was foul play. So he called 911. 
This is the 911 phone call right here. 911, what is your uh, emergency? Yeah, um, so uh, I just got home from work, and uh, my wife wasn't there, which is unusual, and my kids should have been there by now from, like, daycare. So I was like, oh, maybe she went on a walk. Um, I couldn't find her, so I called the, the daycare to see what time she picked up the kids. The kids were never picked up, so I got freaked out, so I hit, like, the Find My iPhone app thing, and it said that her it showed her phone, like, at our end of our driveway. We don't have really good service. Okay. Uh, not the end of our driveway, but the end of our street. So I just drove down there, and I saw her phone with her headphones because she started running again. And it, her, I found her phone, and it's got, like, hair ripped out of it, like, in the headphones. So I'm, like, totally freaking out, thinking, like, somebody, okay, like, what's just her, grabbed her. What's her date of birth? Uh, it is uh, June 11, 1982. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm how... in it right now driving. And I took a picture of her phone on the ground before I picked it up. Okay. How tall is she? Matter. Five, three, five, four. How much does she weigh? 100 pounds. Eye color? Uh, like a bluish blue. Okay, hair color? Blonde. Do you know what she was wearing? Is there no something idea. she always wears? I'm assuming she went running. So okay, is there... Athletic type. What time were the kids... She just started running again, and we live in a... When's the last time... When, when's the last time you heard from her? Uh, she sent me a text asking me if I was coming home for lunch. Uh, what time she was that? Bunch of um, uh, well, give me one second. She sent me a text at 10.47 asking me if I was coming home from lunch from work. And I said, sorry, long day. And that was the last. She never spoke to her on the phone, never any other contact. Okay, and what time are the kids supposed to be picked up? Way before 5.30. She usually goes at like 4.45. Okay. 4.30, 4.45. I'm at the end of the driveway where, uh, I'm at the Old Oregon Trail and Sunrise where they meet, because that's right where I found her phone on the ground. You're telling me that something happened to her is the way I'm looking at it. There's like, then there was hair like in the headphones. Like it got ripped off of like the ground. Yeah, no, I, und I understand, I understand. Okay, I'm sorry. I know it's you're okay. trying to keep me calm, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> okay. And I live, I mean, we live down kind of a sketchy street, so I yeah. definitely, I don't know if I'm allowed to knock on everybody's door, but I will if I'm allowed to do that. Well, let's just have the officers contact you so they can start, you know, processing everything, figure out what's going on, okay? We want to make sure we get your kids, yeah. make sure they're okay. Obviously, yeah, I'm going to call my mom start. and have her. Yeah. Do you want me to wait right here for somebody? If, or? if you want to head back to your residence so they can contact you there, and in case she does return... Okay. Okay. We'll have them contact okay. you at your residence. Call us back if anything changes, all right? So obviously, as a, you know, a young husband, he's in a bit of a tizzy. Like, okay, some somebody took my wife. Something's going on. He's waiting for the police to get there when they get there. He had already talked to his family members about going and picking up his kids. And then word traveled fast. Okay. The community got involved. People was looking for Sherry. Okay. Other, you know, women that go jogging, especially were terrified to go jogging by themselves because there was somebody out there snatching up, you know, mothers, young mothers. I mean, this, this became a worldwide story. I mean, how many of you guys go jogging or walking? right? So this became like, okay, so we all know in the back of our minds somewhere that children can get snatched. But when you're talking about a full grown young mother and it's going viral, so many people were connecting themselves to her and feeling like this could have been me. And it just, it was wild. Then you have her husband, God bless him, on CNN, on Good Morning America, on all kind of news stations crying, you know, looking for his wife. Like whoever has her, please just bring her back. Like he, he was going hard for his wife, his high school sweetheart, his baby mama. He loved her, like his two young babies. It was intense. Then about three weeks later, on November 24th of 2016, Sherry was found running or walking down an interstate. I believe it was Interstate 5. Attention Station 8. Unknown medical problem. It's going to be a northbound I-5. Female needs medical attention. She is uh, heavily battered. It's going to be a uh, some sort of an assault. This was almost 150 miles from her house. So we're talking about two hours. Like this was a bit away from her house. And a woman ended up picking her up. Now there's plenty of interviews from this woman and she was 
completely moved by it. I would say had a little bit of trauma related to it too, to pick up this young woman who is, you know, f taking a shirt and flagging down vehicles to stop and pick her up. And she had a chain around her waist. She had obviously been beaten and battered and bruised. She had a broken nose. She had black eyes. Her hair had been cut. She had lost so much weight, you guys. She weighed 87 pounds. She was emaciated like she, you know, she had been starved. She was branded on one of her shoulders, actually branded like her skin burnt, and she was rattled. She was shaken. She had a chain around her waist. She had a bag over her head. I can't remember if it's her right or her left arm was chained to the chain, and her left hand was in the vehicle chained to something. Make sure she didn't jump out of the car. This woman got her in touch with law enforcement, which then therefore the law enforcement called her husband and her husband came and met her. Now, when Sherry got with the law enforcement and then eventually taken to the hospital, she did not really want to talk to the police. Now, the cops, they're, the FBI was involved at this point. You know what I mean? You got a woman that goes missing in broad daylight. The whole entire world's involved. The FBI is involved. Obviously, they did a a better job on this one than with Brian Laundry, but I'm just still salty about that, but let's keep going here. Sherry does not want to talk to the police. Now she did briefly, she told them what she could tell them, what she could remember. And at this time it was what she described to be two Hispanic women that had pulled over in a van. This is, was the sketch that was later done. Pulled over in a van, uh, put a pillowcase over her head, took her inside the van, you know, tied her up and all that stuff. She said she fell asleep in the van. She didn't know where she'd went. And then she was taken to a place where she was beaten and all this other different stuff, right? You guys get it. You don't need all the gruesome details. She had went really, really, really went through it. But she said that these women told her that the police was involved and that if she ever told them her kids would be hurt, they would come back and get her. And so because of that, she had PTSD. During this time, almost $50,000 was raised via GoFundMe. I think most of us have donated to GoFundMe, right? You know, you see a situation, whether it's a friend that shares it on Facebook or whether, you know, it's a, a, a YouTuber that you trust shares a link or something on Instagram or it's a family member or whatever, okay? We've all donated some money at some point to GoFundMe to a cause that we believed in. She also got about $30,000 from Victim's Advocate. Now, this was for her to go to therapy. Now, during therapy, which again, now Sherry did no interviews with the media, with the press, and a lot of people started to spread rumors that they thought that Sherry faked the whole thing. Like, why would somebody, these women, just pick her up? Why would they, well, during this time, try King was super heavy like it is now. And so there was a lot of people that believed it had to do with that. Sherry's story as she started to go to therapy and do different things, more things would come out. It's like more things came to her memory. It is even said that we just found out since a new 55 page criminal complaint has gone out and it will be linked down below that her and her husband were walking through Dick's Sporting Goods and there she saw what was a weapon. I don't know the terms of what is what, but you guys get it, a weapon. And she started to have a panic attack and a PTSD, the whole flashbacks and shirts on her husband. That was the thing, the weapon that they used. That was the one that they got me into the car with. That's the exact one. And so the husband would call the cops and let them know because Sherry didn't really want to talk to the cops. She didn't trust them. She believed they were involved in her kid. Other little things would come out. She would see something and go, oh, it was this, or the bathroom looked like this, or oh, I remember this coffee table that looked exactly like this, and that the place that she was at. And I mean, time has gone by. This was 2016. It's just six years later. I don't mean to laugh, but here we go. So y'all asked me a long time ago to do a video on this. I did this video a couple years ago, and um, I waited until the end like I typically do and I told you guys what I thought and I believed Sherry's story. Why would a person lie about this? I don't know why we're focusing on something she did in the past to suggest she wasn't kidnapped. I mean, you'd have to believe she did all of that 
to herself. She was branded. Her nose was broken. She had, you know, black eyes and, you know, she had a chain around her belt and she was, you know, running with nothing and she was 87 pounds. Like, who would do this to themselves? Well, lo and behold, she has been arrested, y'all. And I know most of y'all know this and I'm going to tell y'all my opinion at the end too. <laughs> she has been arrested for falsifying a police report on a federal level as well as mail fraud. And she does face up to 25 years. You guys, what? And then that is where this 55 page criminal complaint has come in. So I'm going to tell you some few things. Now, six years later, from what we know so far, I'm sure there are some things that they are not releasing to the public yet, but this 55 page, uh, Criminal complaint paperwork is sure, sure enough going into depth, okay? They're saying it was all traced back to some DNA that was found on Sherry's underwear. The DNA matched her ex-boyfriend that lived a thousand miles away. When investigators went to go and speak to this ex-boyfriend, y'all, the ex-boyfriend said, listen, Sherry asked me to pick her up, okay? We have been communicating via prepaid phones for a while before this. And she asked me to come and pick her up. She said her husband was, you know, putting his hands on her, treating her bad and all that stuff. And she mailed me a, a letter of where to pick her up. And she communicated through there. And I just came and picked her up. Okay, brought her back to my house, gave her a place to stay. When she got into my vehicle, she laid the seat back and she hid the whole way there because she was terrified of her husband. Now, any of y'all that's seen the interviews of her husband, now we can't judge a book by its cover. Okay, so let's be... Let's be real here. We we talk about a lot of people over here on this channel that look like the kindest, perfect people, and then they end up being shot all the way out, okay? But we're just to roll with what we're talking about here. Her husband was crying on television just as looking for his wife. She's alive, and you just got to be happy. They branded her. <sighs> so I just wanted to see her. So I, I just ran past everybody, and I you know, throw open the curtain and she was there in a, in a bed and her poor face. And I just hugged her, I just held her. I felt like I hugged her for like 20 minutes. The boyfriend comes and picks her up. She lays her seat back, rides the whole way there. They only stop a couple times to get coffee and to go to the bathroom. And she don't want to be seen, okay? Cause she's hiding from her husband. Gets back to ex-boyfriend's house and he said he had to go to work he had things he had to do and that sherry stayed in the room now he said they didn't have no relations okay but his dna was on her underwear but let's keep moving here he said that he went to work and sherry stayed in the house in one of the rooms that had like hardly no windows or no access to the outside world and that she didn't go anywhere the whole entire three weeks. He said that he noticed that she was stopping to eat or she wasn't eating much. Like she would eat everything that he would make or bring home or that if he brought groceries, she would cook. But she ate very, very, very small portions and that she told him she wanted to lose weight. So she got down to this 87 pounds. He gave the example of like if there was a banana to be eaten, she would only eat half. Like she was eating very, very, very small portions and she was losing a lot of weight. He also said that she asked him to hit her, but he refused. And she also asked him to go to Hobby Lobby and get a wood burner and had him brand her shoulder, y'all. She He said that after about three weeks, she told him that she missed her kids and that she needed to go home. And this is when he drove her to that like 150 mile marker. It was like 146 miles from her house and dropped her off. And then she ended up flagging a vehicle down. Now, even the lady that picked her up did interviews to the public and to the media and said, how can people say that she made this up? She didn't make this up. There's no way that she would have made this up. Like I saw her, she was in distress. She planned allegedly this whole entire thing, you guys, this whole entire thing. Who could do something like this? Now, don't get me wrong. I know some pathological liars and I've known some in my life that truly just make up the craziest stuff or will just lie straight in your face. 
But this was so calculated. During some of these interviews that the investigators were doing, they interviewed a previous ex-boyfriend of Sherry's, not the husband and not this other ex-boyfriend, but a different ex-boyfriend. And he allegedly said that she would make up stories all the time, that if she wasn't getting enough attention, she'd make up these elaborate stories. And it's even said that allegedly Sherry has faked a kidnapping before, which I didn't know any of that. She's a compulsive liar. She would, you know, not talk to you for three or four days, and then all of a sudden there'd be some fantastical story about what happened. I surfed all the time when I was 15, 16 years old. It's something that I really enjoyed doing, and she told me that she surfed as well. There was always an excuse as to why she couldn't go surf, and she had to have her surfboard that was at her house but didn't have any pictures. She was faking a heart condition at one point, and eventually, like, not only me, but a bunch of people figured out that that was not true. But still, it's like the branding and the broken nose, like, that is a serious extent. Like, you would think, like, nobody's gonna do that to themselves. Well, yes, honey. Yes, I guess some of them are. Sherry Papini allegedly did. Now, she has not been found guilty. As a matter of fact, the family is saying that they are so offended and mortified that she would even be charged with this because of course she didn't think it. They're standing by her as of now. The ex-boyfriend also told investigators that she cut her hair. Remember I told y'all her hair was all cut, all chopped up and like somebody did it to her. He also saw Sherry hitting herself and creating bruises on her arms and she did it at different times while she was there. And then therefore, whenever she was picked up from being found, some of her bruises were yellow and brown and red and just different colors. So it looked like she had been beat the whole entire time she was gone by somebody. Well, she was beat by somebody and it was herself. In that criminal complaint, it said that for years, the police and them, the investigators were really searching and combing through Hispanic women because she had actually not only said that it was two Hispanic women, but had given a description. So you can just imagine how many Hispanic women were harassed because of this, who were questioned, who had eyes on them, who may have been giving given tickets for minor things just to get, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm just throwing ideas out there, but how much people were scrutinized and under a microscope thinking that they were involved in this because the majority of people would never believe that somebody would do this to themselves. So as of yesterday, she made bail. Her bail was $120,000, which was super shocking to me because I read a couple days ago that, that she was a flight risk and it seemed like she wasn't getting a bail, but this article, and I will leave it linked down below too with my sources, said that she made bail and she's out on a $120,000 bond. Oh, it talks about in this 55 page complaint about how when the investigators were questioning her, her husband was in the room, like after they'd already talked to the boyfriend, like right before they arrested her this time, right? Her husband was in the room and they asked her if she knew when was the last time she talked to her ex-boyfriend and she said years ago, long before my kidnapping. And they said, well, his DNA was found on your underwear. And Sherry Papina said, oh no, 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 that's not possible. And they said, oh yes it is. I mean, they had already talked to him at this point. And then they asked her if she wanted her husband to leave the room. And he, she said, well, can I talk to him by himself first? And so they left the room and let her talk to him. Oh, I hope that they have all this on, on recorded. I hope we get to see these interviews y'all on camera. Ugh. But anyways, when they come back in, she starts kind of trying to tell a little bit of a different story. It just, I can just envision how manipulative she was to her husband, you know, like, it's so sad. And these two babies, her two kids that she up and left and planned all this allegedly. I'm shocked y'all. She got me. She got me. I know she didn't get some of y'all because some of y'all were down in the comment section of that other video, my old video. And you guys, I'll leave that link down below too if you want to watch that original one. How embarrassing to watch it now looking at the truth. <laughs> We do the best we can over here, you guys, okay? We do the best. But who would really, some of y'all, I would say, who would really think that somebody would do this to themselves? Well, y'all was right. The ones of y'all that thought, and, and you know how, how sad this is because all the people that donated to GoFundMe, 
the victim's advocate money situation, and but just not even having to do with the finances, like all of the resources that was spent looking for her to save her that could have been used for actual victims of something else, like that right there in itself is a travesty. That right there in itself is horrible. Oh, and by the way, it talks about in the paperwork that that money that they got, the first thing that they did allegedly was pay off their credit card bills. So they took this money, they paid off their credit card bills, and then they spent the rest of it. Now people are wanting to know why the ex-boyfriend has not been arrested yet. And I would just have to assume that it's because he cut a deal. He's going to testify against her if she does not. I'm, I'm guessing this is all alleged. I don't know. He's going to testify against her, which is why he has not been arrested. Now he said, because his parents and all of them knew that she was there, even though they didn't see him, that when he saw all the news stuff and how she was kind of playing it up or the narrative was that she was kidnapped, that he thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to be a part of that but if they come and ask me I'm gonna tell the truth and that's what happened he didn't volunteer the information but when they came to him that's when he said that he told the truth like if I have so many questions did he think he was gonna be with her did he get upset like how do you like I mean I mean you can imagine how terrified he was if everything he's saying is true he did all this thinking he was helping her because she was escaping from this horrible husband. And then he sees all this stuff about how she was a victim and they're showing these literal drawings of these two women that allegedly took her. And then he realizes that he was an accomplice. Okay, he was an accessory or an accomplice to this crime. He was the main person and he don't know what to do. He's like a deer in headlights. Like, should I tell him I'm the one that picked her up? Is it going to get turned around on me or what? Ugh, there's so much, you guys. I could go over the whole entire 55 page uh, documents, but you guys probably don't want that. If you do, let me know down below. But other than that, what do y'all think? Are you shocked? Do you think she should get prison time? I think she, she got some serious mental issues, honey. She needs a whole lot of help if she can be. I, 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 I don't, I don't know, man. This is this is next level. Okay, this is next level. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, I got two videos coming for you guys next week. So make sure you guys hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss them. Yeah, if you guys don't know, I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We do things casually over there. I also have a Patreon. I should have done this in the beginning. My Patreon is for 18 and up. And over there, we talk about more personal stuff. We go live. It's a good time if you're 18 and up, you'd like to join. We also do um, other true crime stuff there on the $2 tier. Come and check me out. And then I also have a Facebook and an Instagram. Those are always linked down the description box. So, all right, you guys, I will see you guys next week. I love y'all. Have a wonderful weekend. Get outside, drink your water, go for a walk, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Love you guys. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust. Search, but you stay lost. We are.